I said, is this not alcohol? They said, no, 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 don't call it like that. Let's, it, you know, you must uh, treat it with respect. It's in Baja. So they said, come with us. So I reluctantly went with them. I went along with them because one of them was my roommate. So they said, just taste. I said, but this thing is bitter. I said, no, 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 it's not. Just taste. Hey, you know, peer pressure. I caged in, I had a <coughs> sip. But it's better. No, 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 no. It's, it's only because you've taken the first. Oh. The by the third one, I was drunk. And uh, <coughs> the second week, they invited me. The, the Chief Justice of the Republic, Mrs. Zondo. And Mrs. Zondo. Tautuna Yamaloba, Motutlehi, Halima Motlante, Le Marona. The Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic, Justice Mandi Samaya. The President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Justice Mulemela. Was told the Deputy uh, President is here, I don't see him. I don't want to acknowledge people in absentia. <coughs> the Justices of the Constitutional Court and the Supreme Court of Appeal and Active Service and the third. Judges, President, <coughs> the leadership of the magistracy. I saw uh, the famous uh, President of the Regional Court and the third judge here. Oh, Honorable Minister, my apologies. My apologies. I apologize unreservedly. The Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development, Minister Similani, the DM, Andre Snell, ladies and gentlemen, including members of the media, the Secretary General. I'm going to talk about my friend. He led me to believe that I have at least 20 minutes. And I think it's a, it's a dangerous uh, proposition to give a pastor and a pensioner a daily way to, to speak without uh, strict time frames. I just want to express my gratitude to His Excellency, the former president and uh, I may not go into details, but you've been very kind to me while you were in active service as the Deputy President of the Republic, both of you. Maybe I should be specific about one incident. I was stuck and didn't have any way of getting to the funeral service of President Mandela. There were no flights and Tata Airport was closed. And the both of you offered me a lift in the presi a vice presidential uh, jet. It was an honor. I will forever be grateful. <clears throat> I also just want to acknowledge the former judge president of uh, the High Court of Gauteng, the former Vice President of the African Court, because I'm talking about my friend. You may not be aware, but this man played a very critical role in ensuring that the Chief Justice and I end up being Justices of the Constitutional Court. About three or four years before the four vacancies were advertised in 2009, he pulled us aside at the Heads of Court meeting. This uh, Benat Mwepe that you see here. And said, gentlemen, posts are going to be advertised at the Constitutional Court. It is about time for you people to get ready and avail yourselves for those opportunities. About three or four years before they were actually advertised. And I said, I'm from a small court. I don't even think uh, there are any judgments of consequence that I have written on the basis of which I could possibly make it 
to the Constitutional Court. I said there are many people who are hungry to go there. I'm very comfortable in my space as a judge president. He said, well, some of us know you better than you know yourself. We've been watching you even as you were fulfilling your role as judge president as the heads of course meeting. Cut the long story short, we ultimately made ourselves available. My friend didn't make it, and I hope to touch on that. How did Ray and I become friends? When we first went to the university, and that was the University of Zululand in 1981, tribalism was at its worst. Our Zulu brothers there, everybody who's not a Zulu was Islua. Justice Benson Gabinda was there. But at least two men stood up. No tribalism whatsoever. Ray Zondo and uh, the former Deputy Judge President Madondo. The three of us were the poorest at the university and we, you would think that we were all the either the Batuanas or the Zulus because we didn't see tribe, we didn't see race, we didn't see ethnicity, we saw human beings. And apart from our abject poverty, I mean, we were the poorest of the poor, the three of us. When you saw us moving about on campus, you would know there goes poverty. But there is something that explains how Mlungi Zondo got to be Chief Justice that was manifest even as early as cause one. Ray was hungry to make it in life. Madondo was just as hungry and so did I. And that what, what, what brought us together was, guys, we're not here to play. We see ourselves as difference makers in the future. I said, I'm going to be senior counsel. Ray said, I'm going to be the most senior attorney in life. So whenever there was an exam, he knew, he knew, I knew, that once the scripts had been marked, you must come and account. So you would go to the other and say, how much did you get? Confident that you are the best performing. And maybe you got uh, 70%. Either Ray or Madondo would say, eh, I've only got 80%. <laughs> or you got 60%, you know, they would come with a zero accent. I only got 70. <laughs> so, we pushed hard to make sure that none of us drops out. The dean at the time, and we checked him out from a book entitled The Afrikaner Bruderbond. He was a Bruderbond. I won't mention his name. We were 180 when we started. He came in and said, oh, so many 180, even women are venturing into law. I can tell you now, you'll be lucky if half of you will still be here at the end of the semester. I said, but how does this guy know that we don't have the capacity to make it? How can you know in advance that we won't make it? And Ray and I, and Jabli Sena Madondo, were determined. And we didn't even have girlfriends. But I suppose our poverty also came in handy. <laughs> Because you, I mean, as a young girl, you want somebody who at least has the capacity to buy you a bottle of Coke. We were forever drinking water, never seen with a can of any drink whatsoever. And that gave us the space to focus on what mattered the most. And that was our studies. I remember one day, you know, big brother Madondo, two things happened about Ray and I. Man, my friends came to me and said, man, just taste this. They called it Mbaha. Now, this Mbaha was wine called Autumn Harvest. It used to be in a five liter container. So I said, is this not alcohol? They said, 
no, 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 don't call it like that. Let's, it, you know, you must uh, treat it with respect. It's Mbaha. So they say, come with us. So I reluctantly went with them. I went along with them because one of them was my roommate. So they said, just taste. I said, but this thing is bitter. I said, no, 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 it's not. Just taste. Hey, you know, peer pressure. I caged in, I had the first sip. I said, but it's bitter. He said, no, 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 no. It's, it's only because you've taken the first. Oh. And by the third one, I was drunk. And uh, <laughs> the second week, they invited me. The third week, I was the one saying, people, when are we going to have Mbahad? <laughs> so my Dondo realized that I had fallen for the trap. So he came as a big brother. I'm coming to you. <laughs> so my don't come. They say, when, when? I know that you come from a very poor family. And I'm not going to allow you now to be misled by these drunkards. <laughs> Is that I have seen your father's name and the address from which he writes you whenever you shared his letters with me. I'm going to write to him. And tell him your son has abandoned his studies. He has decided to be a drunkard. Uh, that was enough to cause me to sober up. And Ray got excited. There were two leaders there. I won't mention them. There was a particular organization. What was the name, uh, my brother? In the Society of Humanities. So Ray decided to be embroiled in the Society of Humanities with t-shirts and so on. He was, I don't know if he was a leader or something. You were a celebrity general. So in came Madondo. He said, Ray, have you forgotten where you come from? <laughs> Stop this nonsense of yours. We are here to study. So the bonds uh, strengthened, we studied hard. First year we passed, we discussed, the three of us were next. We all agreed that we're going to, to the University of Natal. We said, now we, now we want to compete with the white people now. We went there and we accept. And then we took a decision, but LLB is not enough. Let's pursue a master's degree. No, that's why it's not a coincidence that the three of us has uh, LL LLB degrees from Natal and LLM degrees from UNISA. We were determined not to have anybody pity us, but to succeed. Even when we were appointed judges on the basis of our potential, we knew that there were many doubting Thomases out there and from time to time, because Ray and I were appointed first, from time to time we would uh, call each other. How are you doing? What are the challenges? And reminded one another, you can't be comfortable that you have already been appointed. No! We have a nation to serve here. And we have the responsibility to be pathfinders or among pathfinders. Now that we have the opportunity it is for us now to demonstrate to all and sundry that they too can make it. So every opportunity that came our way, we made it a point that there is at least a ray of light that would cause some who are objective to say, okay, they still have some limitations, but they are working hard. They are doing their best. Not to reinforce the pre-existing stereotypes. Particularly because of our Bantu education background. There was a deep sense of caring that was demonstrated. How do I put it now? Maybe I should be blunt about it. At a time when there was an issue concerning the Constitutional Court Justices and Judge President Chope. It was Ray Zondo who said to the heads of courts, absent Judge President uh, Mwepe, who was uh, a member of the JSC at the time, representing the judge's president. He said, people, 
This thing is going to hurt the judiciary more than we can imagine. We've got to demonstrate leadership here and intervene. The meeting of the heads of courts was held at the labor court because at the time he was the judge president of the labor court. We were there. And the purpose of the meeting was to sit down and reflect on the possibility of facilitating some kind of uh, uh, um, uh, an agreement or mediating so that this thing could possibly come to an end. And uh, Judge President Somyalo and I were elected by the heads of courts. I remember approaching then Chief Justice Pius Langa and Deputy Chief Justice Musenek at some conference. I think it was the SADC uh, Forum of Chief Justices because he had, uh, Judge President Somyalo had mandated me to do so. I said, people, none of you can tell what's going to happen. Can you imagine either both or one of you being hauled before some structure the JSC structure that would be investigating this thing and being asked the kind of questions that you could never have anticipated as the top most and second top most leader of the judiciary isn't there a way of addressing this thing before it puts the judiciary into disrepute we didn't succeed we tried to reach out to then judge president Lope we drew a blank. But I'm saying all this to say, this man's heart has always been in the right place. I remember, there was a stage when people were investigating him. Oh, this man has been through a lot, to the point of going to his children's friends, hoping to find some dirt about him. But he never lose, lost his peace. 2009, I'm sure he was overlooked. I believe that he was going to go in. He was in, in charge of a national court. I was only in charge of a smaller court. But he didn't. Somebody whispered to him and said, look, so and so is blocking your upward mobility. If only you can go and, uh, and uh, humble yourself before him. I remember him sharing that with me and saying, I would rather die. I would rather go back to the attorney's profession than go to any man, regardless of who he is, and beg him to facilitate my upward mobility. It's got to be on merit. I'm not going to sacrifice my integrity for the sake of a position. How am I going to feel knowing that had it not been for this man, I wouldn't have been there. Is the opposition legitimate anyway? So he refused. Subsequently, another name was mentioned of those who were determined to frustrate him for reasons that cannot be disclosed publicly. They stood his ground. I'm talking about integrity because it's, it's a commodity that is very scarce in this country and beyond. When I was Chief Justice and he was still the judge, a puny judge, in the, let's call it the Pretoria High Court. I forgot these names, I'm a, I forget these names, I'm a pensioner now. I called him and said, Ray, I want you to come and act. I said, he said, what? Because what? Once did he seek to take advantage of our friendship? You say, Oh, Mohoy, but remember me in your kingdom, as some said to me. Not once. It came as an absolute shock to him. And there is a loaded message in this side. Because it may not be unheard of that people including judges, do compromise principle for the sake of positions. It may not be unheard of that people, even judges, would want to, to 
to, to associate with politicians and be gossiping about their colleagues so that when an opportunity comes for somebody to be elevated, they would be the ones to be remembered. That is the surest way of destroying the tradition. Believe you me, uh, good people, I've almost said saints. You know, a muruti is always a <laughs> The only true guarantor of a vibrant constitutional democracy is the judiciary. And what is going to eat up on the integrity of the judiciary is when you begin to open your eyes wide looking for who seems to be more influential than others and seek to ingra ingratiate yourself to them. Oh, this is their thinking. This is the, the narrative. I dare not say anything that contradicts this. Once you come across a judge who is unable to confront issues that stay him or her on the face, be it in judgments or whenever there is a need to confront them, oh, even if they rise up to a position of leadership, they are compromised already and you can forget about the possibility of the judiciary being protected as well as it should. You know, I'm wrong. I meant to start my speech as follows. But uh, there is a particular book. I, I haven't read it. But the heading is quite striking. It says, The Tabumbeki I Know. And the, the title speaks to me. So I'm here to talk about the reason I know. Not the one you know. I'm here to <laughs> talk about the race, although I know. The man who, when he saw people suffering without financial resources, together with his dear wife, have over the years made it their business to make sure that they don't forget where they come from. I know that there are many beneficiaries of the principal stance that Ray and Stay took to make sure that they are not going to forget those who are in the same position that they found themselves in earlier in their lives. They don't go about mobilizing people for resources. They draw from their own to help underprivileged young people to further their studies. So, I, I think I must conclude. I've known this man to be a hardworking man. I meant to recite statistics, but I forgot to look at my phone. From the time he was acting as a judge of the Constitutional Court up to the time when he was appointed permanently as a judge of that court, he wrote a dizzy number of well-reasoned judgments. Dizzy number. I, I, I think Edwin, his, uh, his record is, is unmatched. So he came and the impact was immediately felt. Even as Deputy Chief Justice, he came Hey, but they are law, man. I, I, I don't know why we talked about sentences and paragraphs. It's not just sentences and paragraphs. I think he wanted to pursue a doctoral degree. Didn't uh, make time and now we are subjected to one doctoral thesis after the other. But exceedingly well-reasoned judgment. Persuasive judgment. So I have known him in that capacity. I didn't hesitate to, to um, have him deputize for me. Even when I was president of the, um, the body of judges in the African continent, I knew 
that his heart was in the right place and I would without hesi any hesitation ask him to go and stand in front. So leadership is functional. Leadership that matters is functional but not positional. When you are a servant leader, a leader who appreciates the privilege to serve and doesn't care whether people praise him or condemn him or her. Even when you retire, you don't worry about legacy. No. It was a privilege for you to serve, do what you enjoy the most, and yet be paid for it. I believe that is the position in which Ray finds himself. My mom, you have done well. And my only plea to you is that the workaholic that you are must at least remember that there is a wife who has been waiting for far too long, waiting for you to do your work and do it well. And I think finally I must just uh, address this one issue about circumstances under which you became the chair of the, of the State Capture Commission because there were story being, being, uh, being uh, made around that issue. When I ultimately got to meet uh, President Zuma, after he had been making remarks on this matter, saying, no, 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 why not decide? You said decide and so on. I said, Mr. President, I've heard you and your people now criticizing me about identifying uh, Deputy Chief Justice Ondo as chair of the commission. I said, there are a number of people that I've considered. I said, Desai was one of them. Uh, I don't remember whether Judge President Musi was uh, Judge President already or he was deputy. I said, Justice Musi was one of them. We looked for him. And actually, Deputy Chief Justice Zondo was helping me, trying to track him down. He was on his way to some conference and so on. I said, uh, Justice Mtiani was one of them. Uh, there was Justice Zondi was the one we sat on for the longest time. I remember Justice, uh, the Chief Justice trying to cajole him, say, you are from a family of Amakawe. It did not work. I said, we were in his house, and I was moving around his chair like this, talking to Judge, uh, Deputy President Mtiani. When I said to Deputy President Tia, unless I asked the Deputy Chief Justice to do it, he said, unless you ask him. So I turned around and faced him and said, why can't you be the, uh, the, the chair of the commission now that we've tried so many people and none of them would accept the responsibility? So it was not a favor. No. I did nothing to facilitate this man's upward mobility. He worked his way up. May all of us who are privileged to have or to assume positions of responsibility not sit down comfortable and hoping that the position will make you what you've never been. You've got to define a position of leadership that you occupy. It will never improve you. No. You've got to come and cause it to speak and to revolutionize the institution in which you find yourself. So, functional leadership is key. So anybody that occupies a position of authority will be watching you. I, I, I don't know whether it's Sukjongi. No, um, but Sukjongi. So know that you'll be watched. It is more about what it is that you have to offer. Are you paving the way for others? Or are you going to be a disgrace? These people are harsh when they judge you. But let me thank you for allowing me to say what I have said from my heart. Enjoy your rest. Avail yourself for such responsibilities as you may comfortably assume. I repeat, your wife. You and I have a pact 
that our wives can speak freely to another when there's a problem that seems to be irresolvable. Remember when I, was, I had a condition and I, I was refusing to see a medical doctor. As a result of that pact, my wife called you and said, your friend has got this and this kind of a condition, but he's refusing to see a doctor. And you called me, explained it all, and said, you must go and see a doctor. Similarly, when there was a particular situation between you and your wife, she called me and said, this is what your friend is doing. And I freely confronted you and said, your wife has reported you to me. So, Mom Tembu, I am here. If this man is running up and down when you've been waiting for him for so long, you must tell me. Then I will confidently accuse him of seeing another woman. <laughs>